Atheists persist upon disbelief and then says, If only we can detect earthquakes before they occur. Part 2. Secondly, either can anyone repel harm nor bring benefit except Allah. Allah the Exalted said, And if Allah touches you with hurt, there is none who can remove it but He. And if He intends any good for you, there is none who can repel His favor which He causes it to reach Himsoever of His slaves He will. And He is the oft forgiving, most merciful. Eunice. Ayah 107. If Allah afflicts you, O Messenger, with a disaster and you desire to remove it, then know that no one can remove it except him, may he be glorified. If he wants ease for you, then there is no one who can repel his grace. He makes his grace reach whomever he wills of his servants. No one can compel him. He is forgiving and merciful to those of his servants who repent to him. Eunice 107. None can escape Allah, as he, the exalted, said. And you cannot escape from Allah, i.e. His punishment, in the earth, and besides Allah you have either any wali, guardian or a protector, nor any helper. al ankabut Ayah 22 You are not going to escape your Lord, nor can you flee from his punishment on earth or in the heavens. You do not have besides Allah any helper to take care of your affairs nor do you have any assistant to lift his punishment from you. Those who disbelieved in the verses of Allah and meeting him on the day of judgment, those have lost hope in my mercy, so they will never enter paradise due to their disbelief. And those will have a painful punishment that will await them in the afterlife. al ankabut 22-23 Thirdly, who told them that they can escape or judge the end result of what can harm or benefit without the permission of Allah? Have they not heard the story of A.D. when they thought that the cloud they saw was going to bring them rain? Allah the Exalted said, And remember, Had, the brother of Ad, when he warned his people in Al-Aqaf, the curved sand hills in the southern part of Arabian Peninsula. And surely, there have passed away warners before him and after him, saying, Worship none but Allah. Truly, I fear for you the torment of a mighty day. They said, Have you come to turn us away from our Eliha gods? Then bring us that with which you threaten us, if you are one of the truthful. He said, The knowledge of the time of its coming is with Allah only, and I convey to you that wherewith I have been sent, but I see that you are a people given to ignorance. Then, when they saw it as a dense cloud coming towards their valleys, they said, This is a cloud bringing us rain. Nay, but it is that torment which you were asking to be hastened. A wind wherein is a painful torment, destroying everything by the command of its Lord. So they became such that nothing could be seen except their dwellings. Thus do we recompense the people who are mudrimen, polytheists, disbelievers, sinners, etc., and indeed we had firmly established them with that wherewith we have not established you, O Quraysh. And we had assigned them the faculties of hearing, ears, seeing, eyes, and hearts, but their hearing, ears, seeing, eyes, and their hearts availed them nothing since they used to deny the ayat, Allah's prophets and their prophethood, proofs, evidences, verses, signs, revelations, etc. of Allah. And they were completely encircled by that which they used to mock at. And indeed we have destroyed towns, populations, round about you, and we have, repeatedly, shown them, the ayat, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc., in various ways that they might return, to the truth and believe in the oneness of Allah Islamic monotheism. Surah al Aqaf, Ayat 21-27 O Messenger, remember Hud, the brother of Ad and lineage, when he warned his people of Allah's punishment befalling them, when they were in their homes in Agaf in the south of the Arabian Peninsula. And messengers to warn their people had already passed before Hud and after him, saying to their people, Do not worship anyone except Allah alone, do not worship anything besides him. O people, I fear for you the punishment of a great day, which is the day of judgment. His people said to him, Have you come to us to turn us away from worshipping our gods? That will never happen for you. So bring us the punishment you promise us if you are true in what you claim. He said, The knowledge of the time for punishment is only with Allah and I do not have any knowledge of it. I am only a messenger who conveys to you what I have been sent with towards you. However, I see you as a people who are unaware of what contains benefit for you, so you leave it, and of what contains harm for you, so you commit it. Then when the punishment they hastened for came to them, and they saw a cloud appearing in one direction of the sky, heading towards their valleys, they said, this is a cloud which will bring us rain. Hud said to them, 
The matter is not as you think, i.e., that it is a cloud which will rain upon you, but rather it is the punishment you hasten for. It is a wind which contains a painful punishment. Destroying everything it passed by which Allah ordered to be destroyed, so they were destroyed, only their houses in which they lived being visible, bearing witness to their inhabiting them before. With this kind of painful punishment, I punish the transgressors who persist in their disbelief and sins. And I granted the people of Hud the means of establishment which I have not given you, and I gave them hearing to hear with, vision to see with and hearts to understand with. But their hearing did not benefit them at all, nor did their vision or intellects. They did not repel Allah's punishment from them when it came to them, as they used to disbelieve in Allah's signs. And the punishment which they used to mock and which their prophet Hud, peace be upon him, used to warn them of befell them. And I destroyed the cities around you, O people of Mecca. I destroyed Ad, the mud, the people of Lot and the people of Madin, and I gave them different proof and evidence, in the hope they will return from their disbelief. al 21-27 Do they not recall Namrud and his ilk? Allah the Exalted said, those before them indeed plotted, but Allah struck at the foundation of their building, and then the roof fell down upon them, from above them. And the torment overtook them from directions they did not perceive. Then, on the day of resurrection, he will disgrace them and will say, Where are my so-called partners concerning whom you used to disagree and dispute, with the believers? By defying and disobeying Allah? Those who have been given the knowledge, about the torment of Allah for the disbelievers, will say, Verily, Disgrace this day and misery are upon the disbelievers. And now, I 26-27 The disbelievers before these people devised plots against their messengers. Allah then destroyed their buildings from the foundations and as a result their roofs fell on them from above. The punishment came to them from where they did not expect as they had expected their buildings to protect them but they were destroyed by them. Then on the day of judgment Allah will humiliate and disgrace them with his punishment and he will say to them, where are my partners whom you used to associate with me in worship and because of which you used to oppose the prophets and the believers? Those who were righteous scholars will then say, Indeed, humiliation and torment on this day will necessarily cover the disbelievers. Anal 26-27 Those before them indeed plotted, the Mufasirans say that this refers to Namrud who built a tall tower in order to climb as he claimed the heavens and fight its inhabitants. But Allah struck at the foundation of their building, and then the roof fell down upon them, from above them, the Mufasirans say. Allah sent a wind which flung the top of the tower to the sea and the rest was destroyed. And the torment overtook them from directions they did not perceive, meaning, from where they thought they were safe. Then, on the day of resurrection, he will disgrace, meaning, disgraced with punishment. An excerpt from Zadul Mazer fi Ilmat Tafsir by Imam ibn al Jazi, Rahamahullah. Slightly paraphrased. Do they not remember the son of Nah, peace be upon him, when he disbelieved and thought that he could depend on something to protect him from Allah's punishment? Allah the Exalted said, So it the ship sailed with them amidst the waves like mountains, and Na, Noah, called out to his son, who had separated himself, apart. O oh my son! Embark with us and be not with the disbelievers. The son replied, I will betake myself to a mountain, it will save me from the water. Na, Noah said, This day there is no savior from the decree of Allah except him on whom he has mercy. And a wave came in between them, so he, the son, was among the drowned. Surah Hud Ayat 42-43 the ark sailed with the people and animals in it, through the great waves like mountains. Noah, peace be upon him, called to his son, who did not believe, and who was isolated from his father and his people in some place. Noah told him to believe, and to get onto the ark with them so that he would be saved from the flood, and he told him not to be with the disbelievers, or he would be drowned as they would be.
Noah's son said to him that he would take refuge on a high mountain so that the water could not reach him. Noah told his son that nothing would save anyone from Allah's punishment of being drowned by the flood, except those who Allah would save in his mercy. A wave came between Noah and his disbelieving son, and his son was drowned by the flood because of his disbelief. HUD 42-43 And if Allah saves you out of his mercy and you persist upon sin, he can return you to that which you do not expect and punish you. Allah said, And when harm touches you upon the sea, those that you call upon besides him vanish from you except him, Allah alone. But when he brings you safely to land, you turn away from him. And man is ever ungrateful. Do you then feel secure that he will not cause a side of the land to swallow you up, or that he will not send against you a violent sandstorm? Then, you shall find no wakel, guardian one to guard you from the torment. Or do you feel secure that he will not send you back a second time to sea and send against you a hurricane of wind and drown you because of your disbelief? Then you will not find any avenger therein against us? al Isra. Ayat 67-69 And when you are afflicted oidolators by some calamity or misfortune at sea such that you fear destruction, those whom you worship besides Allah leave your thoughts. And you only remember Allah and seek his assistance. Then when he assists you and saves you from your fears, and you return to land, you turn away from his oneness and supplicating him alone, returning to your idols. And man rejects the blessings of Allah. So do you feel secure, O idolaters, when Allah has delivered you safely to land that he will not make it collapse with you? Or do you feel secure that he will not make stones rain down on you as he did with the people of Lot? Then you will not find any protector to protect you nor any helper to save you from being destroyed? Or do you feel secure that Allah will not return you to sea a second time, then send a strong wind upon you? Drowning you due to your being ungrateful for Allah's blessings after he saved you the first time, then you will not find any claimant against him for what he did to you and to defend you. al Azra 67-69 As for the righteous servants of Allah, they employ the means provided for them, rely upon their Lord and they are absolutely certain that the end result of all affairs is in the hands of Allah. Have they not heard the story of Tulkarnain, peace be upon him? Allah the Exalted said, They said, O Dhulkarnan, verily, Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, are doing great mischief in the land. Shall we then pay you a tribute in order that you might erect a barrier between us and them? He said, That wealth, authority and power, in which my lord had established me is better than your tribute. So help me with strength of men, I will erect between you and them a barrier. Give me pieces, blocks of iron. Then, when he had filled up the gap between the two mountain cliffs, he said, Blow till when he had made it, red as fire, he said. Bring me molten copper to pour over it. So they, Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, were made powerless to scale it or dig through it. Tulkarnan said, This is a mercy from my lord, but when the promise of my lord comes, he shall level it down to the ground. And the promise of my lord is ever true. And on that day, i.e. the day Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog, will come out, we shall leave them to surge like waves on one another. And the trumpet will be blown and we shall collect them all together. And on that day we shall present hell to the disbelievers, plain to view, to those whose eyes had been under a covering from my reminder, this Quran, and who could not bear to hear it. Al-Kaf. Ayat 94-100. They said, O Dhu al karnain Gog and Magog, meaning two great nations from the children of Adam, are causing corruption on earth by killing and so forth. So can we give you some wealth so you can make a barrier between us and them? Dhu al Karnain said, The kingdom and strength my lord has given me is better than any wealth you can give me, so support me with men and tools. I shall make a barrier between you and them. Bring pieces of iron. They brought them to him, so he began building with them between the two mountains, until when he had made them level with his building, he said to the workers, Light these pieces, until when the iron pieces turned red, he said, Bring copper to pour on top of it. So Gog and Magog were unable to climb over it due to its height nor were they able to make a hole in it from beneath due to its hardness. Dhu al Karnain said, This barrier is a mercy from my lord. It will come between Gog and Magog and causing corruption on earth, and it will stop them from it. Then when the time which Allah has appointed for their release comes before the final hour, he will level it to the ground. And the promise of Allah to level it to the ground and to release Gog and Magog is established and will not be broken. 
and I shall leave Gog and Magog to crowd and mix with one another on the day the barrier breaks, due to their large numbers. And the trumpet will be blown a second time, then I shall bring them all back to life. I shall gather their bones and meat which had scattered, then I shall bring them to the gathering place. And I shall present hellfire to the unbelievers without any confusion, so they can see it clearly. Alkoff 94-100 Therefore, what is incumbent these atheists is that they abandon their disbelief and arrogance, instead of thinking that they can escape the decree of Allah. Read. Read. Allah's different types of punishments by Sheikh Abdullah A.D.H. Deferi. Finally, we do not entertain the speculations of the materialists and atheists, rather we have sound principles derived from the divine revelation regarding how to approach the modern sciences. Imam Muhammad bin Salah al may Allah have mercy upon him, stated, We do not say, we do not give consideration to anything stated by the people in the subject matter regarding medicine, astronomy and the celestial bodies. However, we do not accept everything they say. If what they say opposes the book and the sunnah, then indeed we do not accept their statements. Rather, we take, i.e. believe and affirm without any doubt, that which is conveyed in the book and the sunnah. And we say that an error will come in which the people will bear witness to the falsity of those statements of theirs at present that are in opposition to the book and sunnah and bear witness to. The soundness of that which has been conveyed in the book and the sunnah. An excerpt from the explanation of Bulagol Maram, Volume 1. Page 130. Imam Abdulaziz bin Baz, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, Indeed, that which is stated by the astronomers about the celestial bodies, their sizes and the distance between them, and that which is said about the earth, i.e., by the geologists, etc., is categorized into three affairs. A. That which is backed by the sound knowledge based proofs, i.e., the sharia, therefore it is accepted. B. That which the knowledge based proofs, i.e., the sharia, declares to be false, therefore it is rejected. C. That which there is no proof to either accept or reject it. Therefore it is unproven until a person from the people of knowledge, i.e., upright scholars of Allah Sunnah, examines it, i.e., examines what it indicates based on the book and Sunnah, to show whether it should be accepted or rejected. As for accepting it without sound investigation and observation, but merely accepting it by blindly following them, i.e. the astronomers, geologists, etc. Then this is impermissible because of the numerous mistakes that occur as a result of that. And speaking without knowledge about Allah and that which he has created, i.e. the entire universe and all that is within it. And excerpts from Al-Adillah Anakliya Walhasi Allah Imkani Suad Ilo Kawakib Wa Allah Jarayan Ash Shams Walkamar Wasakun Alard page 74. We ask Allah. O Allah, by your knowledge of the unseen and by your power over creation, let me live if life is good for me, and let me die if death is good for me, O Allah. I ask you to grant me the blessing of having fear of you in private and public, and I ask you to make me utter a statement of truth in times of contentment and anger. And I ask you for moderation when in a state of wealth and poverty, and I ask you for blessings that never ceases, and I ask you for the coolness of my eye that never ends. And I ask you to make me pleased after your decree and I ask you for a life of ease, comfort, tranquility, etc., after death. I ask you for the delight of looking at your face, i.e. in the hereafter, and yearning to meet you without any harm and the sleeting trials, coming upon me, O Allah. Adorn us with the adornment of Amen, and make us, from those who are, guided and guiding, others. Sunan in NASAE number 1305 and declared Sahih by Imam al-Bani, Rahamahullah, and as Sahih had number 1301. Read Materialism, Naturalism, Atheism are corruptions of human nature by Sheikh Abu Ayyad. May Allah preserve him.